Hello everyone, this is Winter here with Sonic Academy and welcome back to another tech tip. In this video, we're gonna be focusing on editing audio samples in Ableton Live Sequencer to create melodic granular patches that we can use as ambiences for our songs. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to take a guitar sample and turn it into a melodic ambient pad. So this is the guitar sample over here and then this will be the pad sound that I'll show you how to create. So before we dive into how I made this patch, we first have to cover a little bit about what granular synthesis is. For this specific example, I'm using the texture time stretching mode or the warp mode in Ableton Live. What this does is it essentially cuts your audio into small little slices or grains that are then playbacked in sequence. This gives us really nice glitchy texture audio upon playback of the sample. So before we talk about this guitar loop that I have loaded in, let's go ahead and show you this effect on a drum loop because it's a little bit easier to hear exactly what it's doing. So let me delete this original version and then we're gonna go into the user library or actually the PAX library here and do MPC. And it's one of the original samples here. So it's underneath hip hop and just load in the sample. So it just sounds like this. If I go ahead and turn off everything. So nothing too exciting, it's just a really simple drum loop. As we're gonna time stretch it so it's half its original length. Which actually sounds pretty cool already, but what we're gonna do is change this from repitch mode to texture mode. Now whenever I increase this grain size, what this does is makes larger individual chunks of our audio. I'm gonna turn down the flux for now, and then you can hear whenever we're playing it back, those individual chunks being played back in a sequence and almost reconstructing our audio in a different way. And here's those same grains when we have smaller individual grains. So it gives us this really nice textured audio playback because it's almost scanning through our audio sample and only playing back small slices. So for now, we can move back to our guitar sample. We can just delete that for now if we want. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull in a new instance of this guitar sample. This is just a guitar loop from the core library in Ableton Live that I've used. So if we go over to our packs, we can remove this for now. So go do core library. It's under music loops and it's just this guitar loop. So we can drag and drop that down into our sequencer. We can turn off all the other audio channels. And then what I wanna do is just grab this individual long guitar note that's right in this section. So we will slice our audio so that we have just our start and end points there. And then what we're gonna do is go ahead and open that up and change that to the texture mode. Turn the flux all the way down and put the grain size at 226. So this gives us really long individual grains. So you can really hear that effect a little bit more pronounced now. So it almost sounds like a delay. So it kind of gives us a cool, almost delay pedal type effect going on. So then we're going to time stretch this all the way. So just slow that down as much as possible. So now we have this longer sample. So we'll extend out the end to the end of our audio sample. And it's gonna sound pretty extreme right now, but this is what this sounds like. Especially in this area right here, you can really hear the effect of that warp mode, the texture mode, and the kind of granular time stretching that's going on. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and resample this into a new audio channel. So change the external in to the guitar loop. And let's make sure that that's the right guitar loop. I'll just rename this for now. Just something like sample. And then make sure to record enable that and we'll go ahead and record that sample in. So 
So now we have our new sample. Go ahead and turn that off for now. Turn off the record enable. And then what we're gonna do is go ahead and reverse that. So we can hit R to reverse our audio sample. Um, and actually, let me just trim that end there so it's to the bar. Um, we'll open that up. We're gonna time stretch it twice. So slow it down once and then once more. And then we can also uh, go ahead and just hit R on our keyboard to flip the sample around. Um, and make sure you have the entire audio sample selected as well. So let's go ahead and time stretch that twice. Yep, that looks good to go. And then we'll hit R. And then we're going to cut off this beginning section um, of the audio because it's just going to sound a little bit strange because it's not going to give us a sustained tone. So we'll go ahead and trim this so it starts just about here. And then we're going to cut off the rest of that. So, so far, our audio sample just sounds like this. And make sure that that's also set to texture mode again. And put the grain size all the way up so we have really nice long grains. And put the flux all the way down. So now it sounds like this. So it gives us a nice sustained tone. And that time stretching algorithm actually makes a really big difference as to how this audio sample turns out. Because as you may have noticed before, when it was just set to the standard repitch mode, I didn't actually play one sustained note. It kind of jumped around a little bit. But whenever we switch it over to the new textures mode, it gave us that nice sustained tone. The final thing that we're going to do for the sound is turn this down five semitones. So we'll pitch it down a little bit. Gives us a little bit deeper of a tone. We're going to copy that over. And then we're going to pitch this down negative eight semitones. That just gives us a nice melodic pattern. You can also hear some nice audio artifacts in the top end of that signal as well. Some sort of time stretching distortion that's happening on the top end. That sounds really nice. So now let's go ahead and add a little bit of reverb and delay to kind of wash out the sound and help it be a little bit more consistent sounding. So let's go ahead and move over to audio effects. Go over to the simple delay and just drag and drop that onto our channel. I'm going to set that to the delay time of three. Uh, we can just do three and three so it's the same. Put the feedback up to something about 35% and the dry wet down to just over 30. This will kind of just help wash out all the transients in the sound, helping us have more of a sustained pad sound. And the final thing that we'll do is just drop in a little bit of reverb. You can go ahead and leave all the default settings and just bring that dry wet up slightly to about 65. So now our completed sound sounds like this. And if you wanted to change up the texture of the sound slightly, you could always start a little bit earlier on in the sample. Which will give you a little bit different sound depending on what you're going for. So I hope you enjoy this tech tip. The granular style mode in the Ableton Live Sequencer is really great, not only for creating interesting textures, but also to create melodic content as well, like I showed you in this video. And another cool thing about this warp mode is it's also available in the simpler instruments device as well. So you can create melodic and playable patches that also have the same type of granular sound. So if you didn't want to do this down in the sequencer, you could always do it in a sampler and get a different type of sound. So that's all for this one, and I'll see you in another video soon. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please We'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.